Peat bogs in Ireland have for a long time been useful as a source of fuel. Where modern roads have to cross these bogs, serious difficulties are often met with. When roads are built over peat, they often become very wavy and distorted. This is a concrete road. Although concrete has been relatively successful on lightly trafficked roads over peat, on more heavily trafficked roads like this, the concrete is liable to the same defects as flexible construction. The waviness of the surface may become very severe and even dangerous. The only really satisfactory way of building a road across a bog is to remove the peat altogether. The normal method of doing this is to excavate the peat with a drag line. This method becomes expensive and often impracticable where the peat is deep. The Dungannon Portadown Road in County Armagh had to be built across a fairly deep bog. The maximum depth of peat was between 20 and 30 feet, and in constructing the road, this was removed by bog blasting. There are three methods of bog blasting, known as underfill blasting, trench shooting, and toe shooting. The method used here was toe shooting. By this method, the road embankment is built step by step across the bog by blasting the peat immediately in front of it. This diagram explains the principle of the method used. A tip head of fill material is piled up at the end of the embankment and explosive charges are placed in the peat in front of the toe of the embankment. When these are fired, the fill falls forward into the peat. In this way, the embankment sinks until it rests on firm strata. Work proceeded simultaneously on several sections of the job. And here is the embankment being built at one end of the site. Fill material, in this case clay, was brought in from nearby borrow pits. This was pushed forward by bulldozers to form a tip head before each batch of charges was fired. It was found useful to make occasional checks of what movement of the embankment takes place during the blast by recording the position of pegs set in the tip head. These measurements give some guide as to the most effective shape of tip head to use. Before sinking the charges, the depth of feet under the toe of the embankment is determined by using a special sampler. A high pressure water probing jet is first directed down through the fill in order to make a hole down which the sampler is lowered. A sample is extracted from the edge of the hole by turning the head of the instrument to the left. A right hand turn then closes a flap at the bottom and the sample is then brought to the surface for examination. The appropriate depth for placing the charges is then decided upon as a result of this examination. When all is ready for sinking the explosive charges, holes are made in the peat right across the face of the embankment with a jetting tool. The jetting tool consists of a canister made to the diameter of the hole required, mounted on a rod and coupled to a fire pump by a flexible hose. Nozzles at the lower end of the canister direct the jets of water downward. The more water that is pumped into the peat, the better. When the peat is in a saturated condition, it can be easily displaced by the combined action of the explosion and the pressure exerted on it by the tip head. Each charge is formed of three to four pounds of polar amontelignite, which is packed into a tin with a detonator. At this site, where the embankment was 60 feet wide, 10 charges were placed in the peat, spaced equally along the front of the embankment. The charges are placed in the holes previously made by the jetting tool. When all the charges are in position and wired together, the circuit is tested. The firing mechanism is then connected to the circuit, 
and all is made ready for filing. When everybody is standing clear, the charges are fired. The end of the embankment moves forward and downward, displacing the peat ahead of it until it rests on the firm strata beneath. Cracks commonly form behind the tip head immediately after the blast. More fill material is brought in, and this is pushed forward to the end of the embankment, which continues to move forward into the peat for some time. When further forward movement ceases, another tip head is built up, ready for the next blast. At this part of the site, the peat was sufficiently soft for the forward movement of the embankment to be continued without building a high tip head. Notice that as the embankment advances, the displaced peat has worked to the sides. Where a copious supply of water is available, the embankment can sometimes be made to move along simply by constantly flooding the peat in front of the tip head. Blasting is then only occasionally required. Flooding is carried out with a jetting tool normally used for placing the charges. This has been withdrawn from the peat to show the jets of water spurting from the canister. On this section of the job, the embankment was advanced over a hundred feet by this method without the help of explosive charges. Here is a road over peat which became both dangerous and costly to maintain. When a new road came to be built alongside, excavation of the peat became impracticable due to the continual flow of peat from the sides into the area being dug. Bog blasting was finally adopted and proved itself to be both an economic and successful method. This is the completed road. Where conditions are suitable, the technique of bog blasting provides the most effective method of building roads across peat.